Okay, today I'm going to be showing you how to use the Globalscape Advanced Workflow Engine to trigger a QFTP script and download files. Now you might ask, why would I want to do that? Because EFT and AWE both have uh, ways to download files in uh, built into the software uh, through FTP and various protocols. However, um, the reason you might want to do this is because QFTP does have a few advanced features that uh, EFT does not. Uh, one being the smart overwrite functionality, uh, where you can add a couple of extra steps to the uh, overwrite functionality, uh, like numerate and things like that, um, and certain conditions for that overwriting. Uh, the other thing that it does have is a resume capability. So uh, if a file is broken or the the file doesn't download successfully it can just reconnect and continue downloading the file uh, say you're connecting to a server that the connection between the two is not that reliable uh, in that case you would just want to um, use the resume functionality of uh, QFTP uh, so let me just go ahead and show you this um, I've got here the advanced workflows uh, you're gonna see I've already pre-built this workflow However, uh, I'll, I will go through it. So um, I have this on my desktop. So this is the AWA test that actually calls the QFTP uh, script. Okay, so it's imported. Uh, just save some of this. So I'm going to go ahead and open it with the Advanced Workflow Engine Editor. You see here, I've got a couple of regions uh, here and a few comments down at the bottom. I'm just going to go quickly through this uh, AWE just to show you what exactly you need to do to configure this. So here in my first region, I have the variable initialization. Uh, this is just a way to make it so you don't have to modify the script, the QFTP script every time you want to change it. Basically, you're going to load variables into the um, script and then execute it. So the first one is create a variable called hostname. So this is going to be the server that you're connecting to. So that could be a DNS name or an IP address. Username, so in this case it's just test. Password, and that's just test as well. Now this is the only drawback of using the transfer engine to uh, transfer files is the script does not support any kind of type of decoding of passwords or anything like that. So the password is going to have to be stored in plain text unless you implement some other type of decoding function in the AWA itself. Uh, so this is the password variable. Now here's my comment. It says always end a trailing slash uh, if not using root for the remote folder. So the remote folders and the, uh, vari uh, the file name variable are just a concatenation of, of the uh, path where the file is located and the uh, file name. So if you're if you're using if it's not going to be the root folder of the FTP site, uh, in this case it is going to be. Then you'll just need a trailing slash so that it it uh, matches up correctly. Local folder is just going to be where you're going to download the files to. Uh, protocol is is uh, any supported protocol by QFTP. Uh, in this case we're going to use SFTP, but you could use FTP or FTPS or even HTTPS. Now this one's a little bit special because it's SOX info. So um, QFTP expects the SOX info SOX uh, information to be uh, passed as a string. So if you were using a SOX five server, per, uh, for instance, QFTP would want it to be like this, uh, and then the you know the port number or whatever. So um, in this case, we're not going to be using a, a SOX in, a SOX proxy, but this the Syntax for this particular variable is all pretty well documented online. I'm just going to cancel that. Now you create a variable named var file. So this var file is just going to be the file name that you want to download. So it does support masks and it does support file names as well. So you can use either one there. So those that's it for our variables for this simple uh, script. Now this is kind of just the minimum required. You could use you could use a lot of different other variables and change a lot of things. You can even variableize some of the methods and things like that. In this case, we're just doing a simple download. So now the way that we call this script is by using um, the QFTP transfer engine. And we're just going to run an embedded script. So it's basically just going to be a basic script. Now let me kind of show you where that action is over here. It's 
It's going to be under advanced and basic script. So you would just want to uh, drop this type of action in here and you can add the script to it uh, like that. So I'm just going to double click this here and show you the script that I have running. So in this case I just did embed it in the task file but you can also just point it at a file. Uh, this is basically just a VBS script that I generated using QFTP, uh, QFTP's macro recorder. So this is um, this is something that you can do. You can also build the script yourself, and obviously uh, substitute a lot of different things here. So um, here you, you're going to see the uh, variables from the AWE being called host name, protocol, login name. Uh, the password, the SOX info, in this case it's just going to be blank. Now proxy info is another one you could substitute if you're using like an HTTP proxy. Uh, local folder, remote folder, and the file name. Just kind of showing you the steps there to download. So um, let me take you to the destination here. In this case it's going to be C temp, and we'll just delete everything there. Now let's go ahead and run this and I want to show you something else here in the task manager. You're going to see the transfer engine launched. Now you can see here it's being launched by the EFT service. And I'll explain, I'm not actually logged in as the EFT service, but I'll explain to you why that, that is what it is. Now you can see here it's already downloading files to the location, which is pretty good. Okay, so I think it's just about done downloading files, but uh, and now you can see here that the FTPTE process has actually gone away in the task manager. So did exactly what we wanted it to do. Now the reason it was launched as EFT service, and you might want to do this based on your setup, is because of the DCOM configuration. Now you're going to open up your component services. Uh, you'll probably want to just configure this so that it can run unattended. Um, you're going to open up component uh, your your component services panel computers, my computer, DCOM config, and then you're going to want to go to the transfer engine class. Which is going to be down here. Here it is, TE connection class. So right click this and choose properties. Now you're going to see here that for the identity, I didn't use the launching user, otherwise it would have launched as my username. I use this user every time it launches. Uh, so in this case, we're using the EFT service account. So that's good. Now what that does is it helps me um, it helps me run it unattended. So now one more thing, I actually have a logon session with that EFT service account over here. And the reason I wanted to show you this is because if you're using the SFTP protocol, you might need to um, you might need to connect to that site once in order to import the SFTP key. Now you can see I've already done that because it's not actually prompting me for the SFTP key. So I can log in and connect it without any issue. But uh, again, if you're using SFTP or FTPS, you'll need to connect once with the uh, service account in order to import, uh, in order to import the key or SSL certificate. So I uh, just deleted all the remote files, but just to reiterate, we'll just make a new text file. And just upload it. Okay. Now, uh, so what you the ultimate goal would be to run this unattended. So we're going to go ahead and create an event role. We'll just go ahead and set this to once. And we're going to execute an advanced workflow. And in this case, it's going to be the QFTP VBS workflow. Uh, so just to kind of illustrate that this runs unattended as well as directly through the editor, we'll go ahead and run it now. We should see the test.txt file show up here. Yeah, there it is. 
And go ahead and clear out these files and just run it one more time just to just as a proof of concept here. And again, it was able to download the test.txt. Again, it's a specific application really only if you're trying to use the resume functionality or the smart overwrite functionality of Qt FTP. Uh, so that's it for this video. Um, the KMS or the actual AWE should be available in the link. Thanks.